A lot of people now understand that they have to invest in equity for the long run. But invest in stocks directly, invest in funds, invest in index fund. That's the talk now and you know that adds to the confusion and that adds to the delay. Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now, last week we told you why you should invest in equity for your long-term goals. Today, we'll tell you the best possible way to invest in equities. So, should you invest directly in stocks, opt for actively managed mutual funds or invest in index funds? We'll tell you the pros and cons of each one of them. So, keep watching. Different ways of investing in equity is that you invest directly and a bunch of stocks because one should always diversify. So things can get things can be a little complicated, but it is very easily done. Choosing the right stock, choosing the good stock, choosing the stock which will actually generate superior return and diversifying because you can never be sure of what will work and what will not. Next is you give your money to a fund manager and he will invest that money for you. Of course, you will have to choose choose a, a vehicle, a kind of fund which will be diversified. Maybe it could be a tax saving fund. It could be a flexi cap fund where it, he'll have the flexibility of investing anywhere. And uh, if you don't know which one to choose, or you think that, you know, it is very difficult to guess which fund will invest, you know, will beat the index or whether it will not be able to beat the index. You want to buy the market itself. You want to buy the index itself. It is possible to buy index. It is possible to invest in your money in such a manner that you will get exactly as much return as the index by investing in an index fund. Of course, there is a little bit of problem here that you have the large cap index, mid cap index, small cap index, and there are index funds mounted on those. Stocks, to my understanding, is simply, you know, the intellectual satisfaction and the joy of uh, building wealth yourself. Be in charge of investing. Uh, but, you know, it's hard work. It is not that easy. So be aware of the hard work backed by that if you are not going to be a speculative investor. And uh, of course, you know, potentially you will earn greater return. You will be uh, more in control and it will be low cost. You will be assured of, you know, uh, nobody, nobody is going to charge you for the, the managing this money. So these are the key advantages, the joy of managing your own money, lower cost and uh, potentially higher return. It is not a passive thing. You can't really buy and forget. Keeping track of things, evaluating options, ensuring that and having a temperament. So these are the disadvantages. The other is that, you know, it is possible to do your SIP with 500 rupees a month. Uh, in this case, I would say that at least having 25, 30, 40,000 rupees a month will actually make, make it well worth, you know, it will justify the effort. Today, it is possible to invest even a small amount of money in equity. But uh, Implementing all your investment principle in terms of diversification, keeping an eye and making it meaningful, that might take longer. But uh, it, it is, I think, uh, the, if there is any kind of uh, break even of the effort that goes into it, I think it will take you a couple of years with your 30, 40,000 rupees a month of investment to make it meaningful enough to justify it. Investing in a mutual fund, it, I would say the highlightable benefit is that it is convenient and it provides you easy diversification. With your 500 rupee, you can start your SIP and that 500 rupee will be spread over when you put your 500 rupee, you will have the proportionate ownership of something like 40, 50, 60 stocks, which that fund might be owning and all the gains or losses since your investment, you will be a proportionate beneficiary of that. So convenience and diversification, uh, the only disadvantage which I can think of is it costs money. There is an expense ratio charged by the fund, which translates into something like 75 basis points, which is three fourths of a percentage to one and a half percent, depending on, you know, the smaller the fund, higher the fee. That's the principle. Uh, so it costs money, it reduces the return. But hopefully uh, a fund manager, which is able to beat the benchmark, is a, a, might justify that expense. The third option is to is index fund because uh, you don't know which fund to choose. You don't know how to invest in stocks yourself. The simplest way of doing it is what you see on TV, the Nifty or the Sensex being referred on television in the mainstream news. 
that it went up or down. You can invest in an index fund where your, your money will be spread exactly in the ratio of the index constituents. Which means once you invest in this index fund, it will get in invested and the gain and loss on a daily basis or over any time period will be exactly as much as the index, less expensive. So you are guaranteed of uh, earning as much as the market. If India sh keeps shining and it goes, uh, it does well, market goes up, Sensex goes up and uh, you will be a beneficiary of that. You should not forget that, you know, how, how equity does well. 40 years ago, Sensex was invented and the base was 100 and today it is it has crossed 50,000. So understand this is the time period. Sometime closer to 2003, the market was at 2,500 on the Sensex and today it has crossed 50,000. So get this context of, you know, last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. So market goes up and you will be able to ride the index exactly as much, no less, no more. And that is the index fund for you. The advantage of the index fund is that it does not require any uh, manual intervention. Your money is invested and it gets distributed exactly in that fashion. So it costs less money. The actively managed fund, which is managed by, which is manned by a person, a fund manager is taking care of, you know, or making decisions, uh, worrying about it, deciding what to do, what not to do. Compared to that, you give the money and the money exactly gets distributed in the same proportion. So the key advantage is that it is low cost. The big disadvantage is that you want to beat the index. When you in invest in an index fund, you have chosen the path whereby you will match the index, getting just as much as the index, no more, no less. Where to start? It depends. You know, if you are in a profession, if you are a chartered accountant, if you are working, if you are, you are a finance professional, you enjoy reading, you understand, and you know, you are in a related area, uh, then why not? You know, you can well try your hand with equity. But it's, I, I would suggest that it is not meant for everybody uh, to begin with. Uh, it should not be your startup vehicle. You know, it should not be your, you know, starting your investment journey with stocks because uh, it requires time, effort, skills, and temperament, most importantly, because uh, the moment you are responsible for taking all your decision, diversifying, ensuring, and keeping track of that, which service to, uh, to avail, what to try out, what will keep you on track, unless you have some advantage getting built up, start with a mutual fund. And uh, second thing is that, you know, if you can't even choose a mutual fund, then go for an index fund. But the most important thing is that start right away, start now. The biggest problem which most people face is not that they are looking for the right vehicle. Get started with something, whether it be stocks, whether it be fund, whether it be actively managed fund, whether it be a tax saving fund. I think the most important approach should be avoid two big, big mistake. One is that don't invest, do your SIP and avoid anything exotic. You know, if you're investing in a, in a uh, in a sectoral fund or a thematic fund or something which is unregulated or you know you don't know what it is about somebody is trying to hawk you an advisory which you don't know what it is uh, how it is configured so keep it simple choose any vehicle which is diversified and do only SIP and start today of course for a beginner they can do without any cherry picking and Make sure that you are able to build a cake and then worry about, you know, having cherry later. But uh, I think, you know, once you have, you start your investment, keep doing it for two, three years. And after that, uh, maybe once you get used to it, it requires that much of acclimatization. Uh, you need to really get used to it, the ups and downs of the market. And it is much easier said, and it is very difficult to withstand and, you know, travel with it. You should add some mid cap or a small cap or anything exotic after two three years because they turn out to be very high octane vehicle they go up dramatically they go down uh, uh, so uh, freely that you know you will be in uh, you will be very stressed if it is in early phase of your uh, investment journey and that has the potential to derail you completely well, that's all we have for you in today's episode. Keep watching the space for more information. If you like the show, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care. Bye for now.